there's 8,760 hours in a year. How much money would you make if you worked every single hour of that entire year? It's probably way less than you think, and it's the reason why I left the fire department. Let's start with some basic math. There's 24 hours in a day, there's 365 days in a year. Each week is 168 hours long. You have 52.14 weeks in a year, bringing your total to 8,760 hours, approximately. We're gonna use my job as a fireman to calculate this out because it's one of the few jobs that you can get paid for for 24 hour period. When I worked at the fire department, I was paid to go to work for 48 hours at a time. I would show up at seven o'clock in the morning and two days later, I would leave at seven o'clock in the morning. I got paid to sleep, I got paid to cook, I got paid to work out, I got paid to run calls. I got paid to be there because we never knew when a 911 call was gonna happen. Therefore, we needed to be ready. So that entire 48 hours, I was expected to be able to get in the fire engine within one minute and begin responding to calls. When we're not running calls, we spend it sleeping, eating, working out, and training. Those were the responsibilities of us as firefighters. But because of the way the job is structured, I was able to work for days at a time. So what would happen if I worked every single day for an entire year? How much money would I make? Let's take a look at my hourly rate. At the time, as a firefighter paramedic, I was making $23 an hour. We operated on a 56 hour work week, which means our overtime didn't kick in until beyond 56 hours in a given week. So there's 168 hours in a week. Of that week, 56 hours of my working time would be considered regular pay or straight time. The remaining 112 hours would be considered overtime, which is time and a half. We couldn't earn double time, we were capped at time and a half. So if we multiply the 56 hours by 23 $3 an hour, we get a total of $1,288 per week in gross earnings. If we calculate our overtime rate by multiplying 23 times 0.5 and then adding that to 23, we get a total of $34.50 an hour. Now we need to multiply that 34.50 by 112 to see how much we could make in overtime for that entire 168 hour work week. It comes out to $3,864. Let's multiply each of these numbers by 52.5 to see how much we would be able to make in an entire year. I'm gonna keep it separated so you can see my regular time and my overtime. When we run that calculation for straight time, we get a whopping $67,156. When we run that calculation for our overtime, we get $201,468. Let's add those together. The result of me working every single hour of every single day of every single week in an entire year comes out to a grand total of $268,620. $25. But we haven't factored in taxes, we haven't factored in our pension, and we haven't factored in contributing to our retirement. We're going to leave health insurance out of this equation because so many different people have different health insurance arrangements. So let's do some loose back of the napkin math. Earning $268,000 a year is going to put me in a significantly higher tax bracket than someone earning $67,000 a year. So we're going to simply subtract 30% of that value. We're going to take $80,000 off the top because our tax liability is going to be pretty high. The way taxes are calculated for your paycheck, they take what you've earned in those two weeks and they multiply it by how many weeks are in a year to figure out how much you would have earned in an entire year for that paycheck. And then they withhold an appropriate amount based on that calculation. So that's why your big paychecks have a lot more taxes taken out than your smaller paycheck. So to run a good calculation for this, we're going to simply subtract 30% in taxes, which comes out to about $80,000. So we can subtract that now. Then we have our pension. And when I looked at my pay stubs, there was about $800 that was taken out every two weeks. So if we assume $400 a week is taken out of our check for our pension and we multiply that out by 52.14, we get a figure of about $21,000 a year that gets pulled out of my paycheck directly contributed to my pension. The last thing we need to talk about is 401k contribution. A lot of people in the fire department know them as 457B. Teachers and other government workers are also familiar with that term, but it's the same thing as a 401k. And this money is taken out pre-tax. We're not gonna factor in the pre-tax, post-tax calculation of this account because of the health insurance wildcard, so let's just take it off the top. The maximum that you can contribute to a 401k is $20,500, so we're gonna subtract $20,000. That brings our total net earnings to $147,625. We divide this number by 12, we get to see how much money we're earning every month month after taxes, your take home, which comes out to $12,302. If we break it down even further to take a look at how much money we're making each week, it comes out to $2,000. 
$929 a week. Broken down per day comes out to just about $418 take home. So if I worked every single hour of every single day for an entire year straight, the most I would be able to make is $413 a day or $147,000 a year. That wasn't good enough for me. I'll never forget the time that I did this calculation. I was sitting at the fire station. I had a cup of coffee. It was in the morning. It was just after shift change. It was my second day on duty. I was there for another 24 hours. For some reason, I got the question in my head. What's the most I can earn? What's my ceiling on my income? What's the most amount of money that I can make if I'm the best fireman in the entire world? I think we know the answer. And it broke my heart, to be honest with you. I loved that job. I loved hanging out with these guys. I loved helping people and running calls and being the person that solves problems. I was a problem solver, a fixer. They would call, we would fix it. It was a wonderful way to earn, but it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough for me. It wasn't good enough for my family. I owed them more. My potential was greater and something just didn't sit right with me. And that's when I started to calculate how much money I would need to leave this job. What would I have to do? How would I need to structure my business? How much money would I be needing to earn in order to leave this job and work for myself? You see, at the time I had just started an e-commerce company. I was about two to three years into it. In case you don't know, it's called Scorch Marker. It was a wood-burning craft marker that my wife and I invented when working on a plaque for the fire department. This small little invention turned into a product, which eventually turned into some Amazon sales, which turned into some Shopify sales, which turned into a company with employees. A company that now sells its products in Michaels and Hobby Lobby and all over the internet and does millions of dollars a year in sales. But at that time, we weren't there yet. At that time, I didn't know the potential, but I knew that there was one key difference. My business made money for me while I slept. Without my direct involvement, I didn't have to swing the pickaxe every day to extract the energy. My business did it for me. It was a system of people and processes and technology that helped me earn money without actively converting hours of my life into dollars. At the fire department, I was actively converting my time into money. And that was the problem. Because when you convert time into money, you are capped at the amount of hours that there are in a year. You can never earn more than that. In fact, Warren Buffett is famous for saying, until you find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work till you die. Popped into my head at just the right time. So how did I get myself out of the fire department? What was required for me to leave? First thing I needed was to replace my salary. The second thing that I needed was to replace my pension and have a retirement system set up. The third thing that I needed to do was replace the health insurance for my family. So the first thing that I did was figure out how much total money I needed to pay myself with my business to make this happen. Health insurance cost about $1,200 a month for a high deductible PPO plan for myself, my wife, and my two kids. Because of our high deductible, we were also able to get an HSA, which is a health savings account. It's like a tax-free way to invest in the stock market and then pay yourself out later based on your medical expenses when they happen. The second thing that needed to happen was a pension. Pensions are very different from any other type of retirement account. When you retire, you get paid based on the percentage of time that you spent at the fire department. Every year that you're working there, you earn two and a half percent of your salary to be paid out when you retire. For me, it was two and a half percent a year and I couldn't retire until age 57. So if I had retired at the age of 57 with top step captain wages, I would only be bringing home about $100,000 a year. Huh, 30 years of work and I only get to bring home 100K a year when I retire? That's not very good. What could I do instead? I needed to build my own pension, my own retirement system, something that would last forever. Not something that would go away when my wife and myself are both dead. That's when I decided to get financially literate. I read three books that changed my life forever. The first was Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. The second was I Will Teach You to Be Rich by Ramit Sethi. Great book. The third was Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins. Armed with that financial knowledge, I was able to understand what accounts that I needed to build in order to set money aside for my retirement to become financially free. The answer was very simple, a Roth IRA. So I opened up a Roth IRA array at Vanguard. A Roth IRA is really great. You put money into it after you pay taxes and it grows tax-free and you can start taking distributions out of it when you're 60. You can invest the money in your Roth IRA into whatever you like. Me, I chose low-cost index funds like VTI. The maximum contribution that you can put into a Roth IRA is $500 a month or $6,000 a year. If I started now in 30 years, I would have just over a million dollars at a 10% rate of growth. If I waited even longer, I could have two, three, four million dollars. And that's money that doesn't go away that doesn't disappear when my wife and myself are both 
dead and gone. Okay, so I need $500 a month for my Roth IRA. I need $1,200 a month for my health insurance. That puts us at $1,700 in cash that I need every month to pay for these items. Well, how do I replace my salary? Luckily, we just did the calculation. A whole month of work for me at $23 an hour comes out to $5,409 a month. This is not factoring in taxes, pension, insurance, or anything else taken out of my check. This is the big number. And this is the number that I wanted to use for my calculations to make them very conservative. What we need to do next is add all of them together. How much money do I need to replace myself, to replace the earning capacity that I've achieved at the fire department? And the answer is $7,109. For sake of discussion, seven grand a month. That's what my business needed to pay me to be a better deal than what I was doing currently. Whoa. So you're telling me that in order to replace myself and to make financial sense to leave the fire department, I only had to be paying myself $7,000 a month with my business? And my business doesn't have a cap on how much money it can make? I can go from a million to 10 million to 300 million to a billion? I'm not limited by the number of hours in a year? You're telling me that I get to be home? That I get to be present when my kids go to school and present when they go to bed? I get to be there for every single dinner time? I don't have to miss any school events or any sports games or any plays? I get to show up and be present for my wife. She knows that her husband is available 24 seven. I'm not gonna come home and have to sleep all day from being up all night fighting fires. I'm not gonna have the PTSD from seeing all the horrible shit and helping people when they're at their worst. And I'm not gonna have to deal with the 60% chance of getting cancer. So you're telling me that all I have to do is earn enough with my business to pay myself $7,000 a month and I can completely change careers and remove all of these limiting factors in my life. That's what I did. In December of 2020, my captain comes into the kitchen. He looks at Jeff my partner, he looks at me. We're both firefighters at the time. We were homies. He said, hey guys, chief just called. I know it's Christmas, but you're forced. You gotta work on Christmas day. I'm sorry you can't go home. Oh, another Christmas without my kids? Are you kidding me? Another day, another missed event, another memory that's not gonna be created because I need to be available for an employer because they told me I need to show up because they can't solve their own problems of staffing needs. I wasn't having it. So at that very moment, I flipped the switch and I said, I'm gonna make this happen. And I said, you know what, Cap? Why don't you go ahead and call the chief and let him know I'm not gonna be there. I'd like you to help me put in my two weeks because I quit. It was the sweetest sentence I've ever said because it removed those chains. I had done something that almost nobody does. People don't leave a job like that. After earning it and going through the blood, the sweat, and the tears, and the pain to arrive at that position, people don't leave it like that. People don't just quit to go do their own thing. But I did because I knew the limits that were being placed on me and I knew the potential that I had and it wasn't good enough. I want more in life. I want more for my family. I want more for my partner. I want more for my kids. I want more for me. I want to earn and amass as much energy as possible so that I can create opportunities for people. The ones that I love, the ones that are close to me, my friends, my workers, my colleagues, my affiliates, the people that I spend my time with. Quitting was the best decision that I ever made because it removed the shackles that were holding me down. After all, they do say that the salary is what the man pays you to forget about your dreams. The math that we ran in the beginning of this video was enough to wake me up. If you could take away anything from this, I want you to know that it's possible. There are ways to get it done. There is a way out, but it's painful and it takes work. Being broke is painful. It's hard. Being rich and owning a business is painful and it's hard. Choose the hard you want. If you enjoyed what we talked about today, check out this video next. I think you're really going to like it.